Built for builders, from beginners to pros, this is where great backyards begin. Welcome to the Ultimate Deck Podcast, your source for backyard building tips, product breakdowns, and pro advice from the front lines of the industry. Here are your hosts, Shane Chapman and Wade Laurent. Welcome back to the Ultimate Deck Podcast with Wade and Shane here. How are you doing, Wade, buddy? I'm great. Let's get to it. Okay. <laughs> Joist spacing and sizing we're talking about today for decks. Um, so people commonly have questions around what size of joists they need to use on this specific shape of deck or whatever. And also, should they do... You know what I see on Reddit a lot is, do you think I should do... Um, you know, my deck's 12 feet out. Do you think I should do 2 by 10s at 16 inches on center or 2 by 8s at 12 inches on center? And that question gets asked a lot. It's like, what's the better thing to do? And it's like, uh, and people often think, do the 2 by 10s 16 inches on center because it'll be stronger and it spans further. Um, but the one thing I think people rarely think about is what impact that spacing has on the decking that's going above it not just the spans of the wood itself. They worry about the joist deflection and not the deck board deflection. So um, 12 and 16 inches on center are easily the most common joist spacings out there. Some high-end deck builders will t- go tighter. I've heard of guys doing 10 inches on center. I've heard of somebody doing eights one time. That was pretty wild. Um, 24 inches on center used to be more common with two by decking. So two by fours, two by sixes, that kind of thing. Yeah. Don't hear much about that anymore. 12s and 16s is pretty much where it's at. Yeah, I would say that, yeah, 12s and 16s. That's that's covering off 95, 98, 99% of the decks. Yeah, and pretty much every composite decking or PVC decking on the market can be installed at 16 inches on center, like pretty much all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a misnomer out there that often people think that it has to be done at 12s. It doesn't. I, a lot of them will say for optimum feel, do it at 12 inches on center. But as far as warranty goes, you can do 16 inches on center for any composite decking in any residential application. Commercial application, sometimes that does require Things tools. get changed there. Yeah. yeah. And then there are the odd composite decking out there that can span 24 inches. So you've got wear deck that can. You've got uh, Moisture Shield new PVC with the fiberglass in it. I can't remember what it was called. <laughs> That's supposed to be able to do 24 inch on center. Um, Everlast, Apex Plus, and Pioneer is supposed to be able to do 24 inch on center. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> There's just <laughs> I, no way. Like, you know. They say you can, and it's great that it's strong enough that you could. Um, and I think the one application where it's like, oh, that actually helps a lot is on docks. Yeah. And, and, and that's where a lot of those brands, they, they focus in that area quite a bit. So that's probably why they're promoting that. Right. And, you know, you have your four foot wide dock and a runner down the middle. Right. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And you want to do maintenance free decking. Excellent. Moisture shield, yeah, because, last. <clears throat> and the other reason I think that that works so well is that when you're walking on a dock, you're likely to walk down the center of it anyways. And so you're probably not going to feel the deflection and the soft, like the sponge under your foot when you're walking on it, right? And yeah. even if you do, it doesn't matter. You're on the water, the dock's right. already moving. I was going to say, your expectation of what that should feel like is different when you're on a dock. You're already expecting to feel movement on a dock. Yeah. Like, the dock itself is probably moving. You're watching it on a boat's moving. It's not going to bother you if there's a little bit of flex in the decking. Yeah. Um, but when you're on your deck, that's supposed to give you confidence that it's strong and safe and, and you can feel flex on a hot day under your foot. Some people, it really bothers. Other yeah. people, they don't care. Yeah. Some people are like, that is not good. And it's like, it's fine. No, it's not. Yeah. So there's that component to it. I think tighter joy spacing is always preferable um, for the feel of the decking. Um, if you're doing wood decking, 16 inches on center will be fine. The other thing to consider is if the decking is going angled, now all of a sudden you have to do your joy spacing tighter. So 45 degree angles on any composite, it's going to be 12 inches on center required max. Yeah. Um, yeah, my so. recommendation to people is that I typically have three times when I want somebody to be doing 12 inch on center. So if you're running your decking on an angle, that's because of warranty, (laughs) right? I recommend it. Number two, if you're using a PVC product, I always think that it's a really good idea to go 12 inch on center with PVC. Even if it's like, even if they say you can do 24, if somebody's like, oh, Apex can go 24. It's like, ah, I just like 12 on PVC. And the third time is when you're south facing. Uh, I think if you're a, a really hot south facing deck yeah. composite or PVC is going to soften up in that heat. And so I just think your, your expectations will be better or will be met better 
if you're doing 12 inch on center in those three times. Yeah, I think I'd be okay on the the stuff that claims it can do 24. I don't know why I don't know why we're saying claiming. Like it can. That's why they that's why they That's why they that. claimed it. But <laughs> I think on those ones I'm okay not going to 12 on those ones that say they can do 24 because going to 16 is significantly tighter than what they're saying it can do. I think just like one step less than what the max is is like is a pretty safe bet. So if something says like install at 16 inch on center it's like okay, well if you really want this thing to feel sturdy as hell go to 12. But if they're saying can it be installed at 24, going to 16, I'm at, I would have to imagine is going to be like really, really solid if it's been tested for optimum strength at 24 even yeah. then, you know. But um, And then the other component to this is, do you want to touch on stair stringers at all? We should. It's related. Sure. It's so on your stair stringers, refer to your install instructions because often, pretty much, if not always, you're required to put those a lot tighter spacing than your joists. So even if you're doing 16 inches on center with Trex, for example, or Fibron, whatever it is, uh, when it comes to your stairs, refer to the instructions because that's almost guaranteed to be nine inches, Eight. 11 inches, 12 inches. Yeah. Somewhere between nine and 12 is pretty common and not more than 12 hardly ever. Yeah. So you really need to tighten up on there. And it's because there's a multiplier when you're, when you're coming off the deck and you're dropping onto it, you're, and you weigh 175 pounds. Well, when you drop your force, I can't remember what the number is. There's a multiplier there that all of a sudden your 175 turns into 250 or something. Just like right. that drop onto the stairs. And I always or think up. of going up, right? You're like, you're running up the stairs and it's like, you gotta, you have to go to get onto the stair. You've had force that lifted you up there, then your weight, and then that goes down and now you got to use that force to get you uh, up again, right? Yeah. So, yeah. and then, or you're carrying something heavy, carrying an appliance up it or something like Certainly. that. And you're like one foot at a time. And it's like, that's a lot of, that's a lot of point load on those little stringers yep. on the stair like that. Um, yeah, so just, yeah, be aware of that. I just think it's bad to run things at max, right? It's yeah. like my truck can go 170, right? It's yeah. like, but I don't drive it at right. 170. 165. <laughs> I drive 165 all the time. It's yeah. way easy. Anyways, uh, stuff to watch for is a lot of your fasteners are going to be specced at 16 inch on center. So if you're ordering fasteners for your decking, be aware of that you have, you have 25% more product that you're going to need for your fasteners. Right. Yeah, because sometimes a box says, this is a 900 count box to cover 450 square feet. That's for 16 inch on That's center. 16 inches, yeah. Right, and so make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, the The other one is your hangers and your fasteners, like your your joists, right? You're going to have a little bit more product there. It's going to be a little bit harder to get your tools in and work on that space, but I don't think any of this should be a deterrent. This is just like an awareness. Yeah, to tighten gonna, up right. your joist spacing, I, I believe it works out to an extra two joists every eight feet of deck. Right. So it's it's really not that much to tighten it up and, and give you better peace of mind and a sturdier feel in your deck. My deck, I did and a 12 inch setter, and, and it's a scallop budget board, and it feels rock solid and always has. Yeah, People and it's like, way stronger. Would you do that again? It's like, yeah, it was like my deck is 16 feet wide. It was four more boards. Right. Like, so for nobody even knows for an extra $3,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These days, that's the price of lumber. No, but like for an extra, like call it like hundred bucks, hundred twenty bucks, yeah. whatever. Like on the whole deck, like absolutely twelve inches on center. Yeah, to me totally makes sense. Worth it. Um, now the other component to this is the joist span, which people are probably what they probably thought we were going to talk about at first. The joist span is a whole different story. So how far can I span, or what size of joist do I need to cover a ten foot deck? This is very very determined by your local building department. So there are span charts published by International Building Code, International Residential Code, Canadian Wood Council, U.S. Wood Council. They all have span charts. They're all very similar. I would say I'm going to get some like generalized numbers and do a plus minus one foot on these because like I said, everybody's different. Everybody's different. But generally a two by six, they'll say about nine feet. Two by eight, they'll say about 12 feet. Two by 10, they'll say about 14 feet. Two by 12, they'll say about 16 feet. That's kind of the range. And to your point a moment ago where it's like, I don't ever like to max anything out. I also don't think you should ever max joist bands out because it will, the deflection, again, it's not unsafe, but it's just, it's just not expected to have it like bouncy like that. Nobody wants a bouncy deck. So if you go put a two by 12 and max it out at 12 feet, yes, it's accepted by code. It's not going to break. But you're going to be like, why is it so bouncy? And it's like, well, that's why. So yeah. I always like to, reduce that a bit yeah and i think my sort of rule of thumb is two feet right over so if i'm eight to ten ten to twelve twelve to four sure that's kind of what i do in yeah. my head and uh, two by sixes i don't even like hardly ever at all like uh, that's a ground level deck if it's for a me. ground level deck yeah. or if it's it's like a four by four stair landing fine but like a two by six but, at nine feet is ridiculous but now <laughs> so the code changed in 
like in Saskatchewan. And yep. if you're fastening railing onto a deck, it has to be a two by eight frame. And so now I'm just like, I don't even right two by six is on the ground only for me. That's yep. it. Totally under two feet where you don't need railing. Fine. Yeah. Um, so the other thing to consider is when you do that tighter joy space and these things are, these things are related a bit. Absolutely. A two by eight, 12 foot, sorry, a two by eight at six inch on center can span about that 12 feet. But as soon as you tighten it up to, and don't quote me on these numbers, people look at your span charts, but yep. as soon as you tighten it up to 12 inch on center, you gain an extra foot typically, or you gain a little bit of extra max span. Yeah. So at 12 inch on center, you can probably get away with 13. But the point being, it gets a little bit stronger, the more joists you have in the deck to support everything. Yeah. Office. And depending on where you're listening to this, obviously we're in like Western Canada. So we use a lot of spruce pine fir. Um, you're, like your yellow pine is going to be a different, it's a different density and it's not going to span as far. And so just, yeah, to Shane's point, find a span table from your area and spruce pine fir looks like on the span table is basically SPF. Yeah. Yellow pine is either like YP or yellow pine, it'll say. SYP. Zip. Yeah. Yeah. And and the other thing too to look for is uh, incised, incised versus non-incised, non-incised has different span charts Good too. Call. So incised generally has a little bit less span than non-incised yes. and incised is where you see the lumber that has all the little like cut marks in it perforations and so that allows that lumber to be uh, deeper penetrated by the treatment mm-hmm. so for longevity but it weakens it to hair yeah good and for so, ground contact right it, you know if you're if you're in high moisture areas maybe a perforated or an incised joist is a better plan yeah right. So, and you'll see that, you won't see that in a lot of the states. Like, the, I don't think they ever really uh, need to incise um, yellow pine, so southern yellow pine. I think that stuff takes the treatment really, really well. Um, but you see it with, like, hemlock. You see it with SPF yeah, um, quite a bit. So, you just have to be aware of that, too. So, I think the moral of the story here is, the general is, tighten your joists up one step more than what they tell you the max is. I think that's a good extra few bucks spent. So, if it says 16, go for 12. So that's 24, go for 16. Yeah. And never max out your joist span. If your bo- building department says this two by eight can span 12 feet and your deck is 12 feet or 12 feet to the beam at least, maybe size up. Maybe go to the two by 10. Or do the 12 inch on center because at least you know you're not maxing it anymore. You're getting, yeah. you're adding a bit of strength that way too. Yeah, for sure. If it's 16 inch on center and that, yeah, that makes that would make, I would be comfortable doing stone. that, right? Yeah. I'd be comfortable if, if it said it was 12 feet to the beam and that was all I could do at 16, like at 16 inch on center. I yeah. just, I would tighten it to 12 and, and be gone. Yeah. And the benefit, I, like I've applied to people before, cause that's a common thing. Like I said, where they're like, do I do two by eights at 12 inch on center or two by tens at whatever? It's like the two by tens at 16 is going to cost you more. Yes. They're both, they're both going to give your, your lumber deflection a better feel than what you, if you go within the minimum, yep. but only one, only the two by eight at 12 is going to make the decking feel better as well. And it's going to cost less. Like right. those couple extra joists is going to cost less than upgrading all the joists to two by tens. Yeah. So, uh, I hope I didn't uh, infuse it again at the end there, but I think we, even if you did just call advice. him, his phone number is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hope that answers all your questions though. about, um, joist spacing and sizing till next week. See ya. See ya.